Hi guys, just came out of the library in the town centre and look who I spotted here now. Polish. Polish I think. There's a lot of Polish in this town centre. Yeah. Um, you go to the hall up the road there, do you? Or not Old Bedford Road? Are you born a Jehovah Witness? Yeah. But we do get baptized when yeah. we all dead, so I wouldn't really say that I was born. Ah, oh, right. I, I, my parents were. Yeah. yeah but Jehovah Witnesses are starting to baptize at a much younger age now. It depends, because there is no particular age yeah. when you should get baptized. It, it, it's your decision. Right. What do you think the example is, the scripture says that we should follow our Lord's footsteps closely? He's the model that we. He's the example. He set mm -hmm. the standard. Yep. What, what do you think that tells us about uh, the age of getting baptized? Uh, uh, I think it's hard to say right now because Jesus got baptized when he was. That's dead. right. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, it was the age when um, when people were um, were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, can you, you in, get the in, in the age of thirty? They usually it was the right age to basically yeah. uh, as as you know, like you are eighteen years old. Yeah. And you can be uh, an adult. Uh, yeah, eighteen or eighteen to twenty one. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But you. And, but would you yeah. agree that um, between the ages of eight and twelve, you don't fully appreciate. Um, what you're letting yourself in for in the sense that you go through teenagers, you can rebel, you know, your whole psyche can suddenly change at that age. People that you mix with at school and everything. And what, you, what you're what you doing to a child when you're allowing them to get baptised between the eight, ages of 8 and 12 years old, which is becoming more and more common amongst your other witnesses, yeah, you're setting that child up to be excommunicated by the whole family when they're, t when they're still a young person when they're still 16, 17, 18 and they need that family support. Yeah. Uh, but it can happen at every age, I would say. It can happen at any age, but when you're 24, 25 years old, yeah, you're much more able to, to fend for yourself out in the big wide world. But when you're 16, 17, 18 and you are cut off from your family, or you're in this extremely awkward situation living at home with your parents, you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult. And I think that I think that um, it's very, very wrong. She's, she's, tell, she's telling you not to talk to me now. It's very, very wrong uh, to, to baptise children at a young age. Okay. Okay. Hello, Veronica. Hello. Yeah. Oh. No, no, I'm not pointing at you, it's pointing at the grass. Oh. But if, okay. you got, if you're going to talk about me, you, you didn't have to take the lady off to one side. You could have said it openly. Mm -hmm. Oh well, I was talking to her. Yeah, yeah, you was talking about me to her. You took her to one side, all very secretive it's to me. Nothing secret, you know yeah. who I am. I know who you yeah. are, but the you could have no. you could have come and handled this situation entirely differently. Okay. You okay. could have come up very respectfully to these girl well, uh, young ladies, listen, not girls. I didn't to interrupt your conversation, but I had talking to the sister. But anyway, yeah, yeah, no, say, no, 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 no. I don't know what she said to you, but let me tell you now. Um, I was totally and utterly devastated the way those each were treated by this organisation. It makes mistakes. If somebody's going to be disfellowshipped, yeah, they must be allowed a right of an appeal. They must be allowed the right of an appeal. They disfellowshipped me. I didn't attend. I didn't think they had the right to call me to, before a judicial hearing. I said, I'll go straight to appeal. I went to appeal and you know what? I won it. The man said, you shouldn't have been disfellowshipped. He said, but I'm going to disfellowship you on the charge of reviling. So I called two elders agents of Satan, yeah, because they had tried to disfellowship me twice already for no good reason. I won both of those cases that they dragged me before judicial hearing. If you ever get to go before one of them, you'll understand how stressful it is. I was skinny. Somebody told me I looked anorexic. I couldn't eat. I wanted to stay in the faith. But they tried to throw me out. You know why? Because I disagreed with the faithful and discreet slave doctrine as they... I agreed with it, but the way it was taught at the time, 
they taught only the governing body was a faithful and discreet slave. But that wasn't officially changed until 2012. When I was in it in 2004 and got this fellowship in 2004, you taught all the anointed was the faithful and discreet slave. But I realised that that was not what was being taught. So I complained about it, I got labelled a troublemaker, unruly, this all kinds of things. But the point I'm trying to make to you is that the, they disfellowshipped me and they didn't allow me an appeal. Simple as that. And again, what you're doing is, is, is quite... Are you talking about me in your own language in front of me? Or am I assuming wrong? Is that right? Were you talking about me in your language? So I didn't understand I what you... Because we're not talking uh, good in English. Yeah. Yeah, you know, fair enough. Yeah. She, fair yeah. enough. Could I, you know I accept that. Could you stop us? Yeah. 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 Um, I think again that you were having quite a respectful, interesting conversation with me. I was throwing up some relevant points to you. Was I was I'm not, I'm not just coming and saying Jehovah's Witnesses are wicked. Here. I was just trying to have a challenging conversation with you. A, a debate with you that's that's quite open and respectful and honest and all of a sudden because that lady's come up and said she's you cut that conversation was it too difficult was they asking too difficult questions for you uncomfortable questions I just want to obey God's word, okay that's that's good I respect that but it doesn't say in God's word that you uh, it said that you should if somebody leaves the faith it says you should no longer say a greeting to them and you should no longer eat with them. Now you take that literally first call as it is. You're not going to talk to me and you're not going to invite me around for food. Yeah. But there is another way of looking at that scripture. When you read your Bible, uh, our precedent is the Bible. Or is, it the go is your precedent the governing body in New York? Is your precedent the Bible or is it the Watchtower? Because you know the Watchtower has changed its ideas and beliefs over the years. So our precedent must always be the Bible, always. And this is, this is how comes I got into trouble in your organisation, because I held that standard. No matter what I heard from the platform, my, my uh, rule book is the Bible, and that must always, always come first. That's the only way to please God. Yeah? And the point I'm trying to make to you is if you actually read the Bible, read it tonight, the first few pages of Galatians, Ephesians, Thessalonians, there's a greeting. The Apostle Paul opens those books with a greeting. May you have undeserved kindness and peace from God the Father and our Lord Christ Yeshua. So 2,000 years ago there was a Christian greeting that Christians used with one another. So when the Bible says no longer say a greeting to a disfellowshipped person, it doesn't mean to say that when you see me walking along the street you can't say hello, good morning, how are you? What it means is you won't say to me a greeting in the faith, the Christian, or your faith, the Christian greeting. Does that make sense to you? And also, like, as Jehovah's Witnesses, you have spiritual gatherings where uh, you invite only one another, and you have food, and you have association. And if somebody's put out of your congregation, I wouldn't expect you to invite them to a gathering like that. Yeah? The Apostle Paul said, don't meet with them and don't invite them into your homes in the first century they didn't have kingdom halls you were invited into your home for fellowship am i making sense to you yeah so if your family member who does not live in your house yeah your your brother your uncle your niece and they're disfellowshipped when you get together with other jehovah witnesses you wouldn't invite them but because they're your own flesh and blood when you get together with your mother and your father and your uncle and whatnot you can invite them as long as it's not a Christian fellowship gathering. Does that make sense? You see where I'm coming from? Yeah? You're, you're shunning me right now. It's not scriptural. It, it's totally not scriptural. It's what your leaders, how your leaders have interpreted it. Please read your Bible, the first few verses of every chapter, and you will see that greeting repeated over and over and over again. It's a Christian greeting. If you live in Luton long enough, you'll hear Muslims say a similar thing to one another. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam is the reply. But no matter how much they know you, they won't say that Muslim greeting to you because you're not in their faith. But they'll say good morning to you. 
and they'll talk to you yeah and this is what the Bible is, is showing you to do. It's what you're doing to me right now. What she started to do is, is not Christian. It's totally unchristian. Thank you for your time.